emu. And then there's a panel um, of a mysterious swordsman. Um, I don't know if he's a part of the revolutionary, part of the god knights, if he's a pirate, if he's the man marked by flames. But his sword reminds me a lot of Griffin. And I'm wondering, is this Shanks' long lost brother? Anytime that we have a chapter that involves portraying the Yonko um, in a chapter, that means it's going to be a good one. We've gotten a couple of panels, a couple of cover pages recently involving them. And it happened in this chapter as well. This is chapter 1121. It is titled The Ebb and Flow of the Ages. We start off with Luffy um, and Bonnie and that part of the Straw Hats. They are going against Saturn. He is still trying to pursue them, still trying to go after them. Um, Luffy warns, hey, they're immortal. Hey, his claws, they're poisonous. We have to find a way not to allow them to touch us so that we can escape. Bonnie, she powers back up into her gear fifth form. I think this is pretty cool because she needs to be the one in order to take down Saturn. And I love Luffy whenever he does things like this, whenever he allows people to fight the battles that are properly theirs. We saw it in Wano with the um, Akayaza 9. I always say it weird, but you, you guys know who I'm talking about, how he stopped Yamato from attacking Kaido because he said, hey, it's not our fight to start this. And he allowed them to fight them until, um, you know, he got on the rooftop and then Kiyomon asked him to defeat Kaido. And so similar to here, we know everything that Bonnie has been through because of Saturn, um, different things that Jenny and Kuma, they went through. So Bonnie, she has to be one of the people that finishes Saturn off. Vegapunt talks about how the day that the Void Century comes, the truth comes to light. Um, it's happening soon. He talks about ancient weapons that we know um, that their power is out there. The ones that sank the world's con Continents. And in this panel, we see um, Shirahoshi and Vivi. We know that Shirahoshi is Poseidon. I'm not entirely sure why we have Vivi um, in this same panel. Is it because the first time that the ancient weapon was brought up was Pluton in Alabasta? Or is it because of her being affiliated to or being a member of the D clan and Emu wants her because he had something to or a vendetta against? um lily i'm not entirely sure why um vivi is in this panel but hey we get to see vivi so i'm all here for it vegapunk also talks about how different races they are constantly going to be pursued and i'm not entirely sure if it's because they have some relevance to getting the one piece or if it's because the world government specifically the gorse um and the celestial dragon is feared what they can do talk about kuma because his bloodline is special a lot of us speculate that joy boy he was a buccaneer and that's why there's that giant straw hat um under mary jawa we also see king we also see um pudding in this chapter we know that lunarians that they originally resided on top of the grand line and so you know that means that the gorse in the world government that they eliminated um the lunarians um in order to take that spot and we know that king he was also experimented upon then there's putting a member of the three eye clan it is rumored that once they awaken their third eye that they can then read the Poneglyphs. So a lot of individuals that are part of um, different clans, and you could even say the giants as well, um, they have some meaning and they're important to the story. So that's why the Gorose and the Celestial Dragons are trying to eliminate them. I really like this part of the chapter. As I mentioned earlier, this is Bonnie's fight and Luffy's assisting her, of course, because Bonnie's not strong enough on her own, but she talks about um, how Saturn, all of this is because of him. Real gods exist, real heroes exist, Nika exists and it's time for her to go ahead and defeat him after everything that Saturn has done turning Kuma into a slave um, te doing tests on Jenny and her forming the sapphire scale so her and Luffy combine to hit Saturn with a liberating, liberating Nika punch they end up and it appears that their gatlings or their punches was so fast that it didn't allow Saturn to regenerate um, I think he's probably done for this arc he's not dead or anything um, but we do see him he's about to fall into the sea i wonder if we'll finally see whether or not these gorase can survive in the sea or is another member going to save him vegapunk mentions that there's different individuals that can't be oppressed and those are going to be the ones that 
that are closest to the truth and he wonders is it a coincidence or did roger set this all in motion if you look at the past roger he talks about how he thinks that his son is going to be the one to find the one piece and the reason why the great pirate era was the thing is because roger he needed to set this all in motion in order to allow a joy boy to exist if you guys have made it this far that means you obviously like the video so don't forget to leave a like on it subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you guys never sound a new video we pump out different content all the time and then this is the part where the chapter essentially ends with vegapunk talks about um and we see different individuals specifically uh getting to see uh buggy and his crew across uh, skills with crocodile and beehawk seeing the world government talk about they're going to go for it as well there's um the blackbeard pirates um it's not really blackbeard but it's more so talking about the pirate island we also see the red force um talking about how everything that's going to happen in this world the victor and who gets to decide the new um era that the world is going to be in it involves um whoever gets the one piece we see the four yonko here we see kobe there's um alkiji and garling sabo there's dragon akainu there's emu and then there's a panel um of a mysterious swordsman um i don't know if he's a part of the revolutionary part of the god knights if he's a pirate if he's the man marked by flames but his sword reminds me a lot of griffin and i'm wondering is this shank's long lost brother but looking at this uh, I think Oda has done a phenomenal job of setting up the final battle, the final war, because I was one of the individuals. I didn't think that the battle for the One Piece would be a one for one fight. I didn't think that it was just going to be, well, this is like, I guess, what a lot of people thought, but the Straw Hats solely going up against the Blackbeard Pirates, to me, that didn't ne necessarily make sense. I think that, at least in terms of the Yonko that are involved, I think all four of these individuals will be at Laughdale and the reason why I think Buggy will be there is because Buggy was um, a part of the Pi Roger Pirates crew he wants to get there um, and also he went to Marine for it it would just be so Oda like to involve Buggy being a part of the One Piece um, I think that similar to um, it'll be a battle that happened like um, in the movie Stampede when they were going after uh, Gold Roger's treasure and we know that it ended up being a punic of to Laughdale but seeing the different pirates doing a free for all just going after that treasure um before douglas bullet ended up blowing everything up i think that's how um the battle for the one piece it's going to be and i'm really excited for it um i can't wait to see it maybe this will be where zoro ends up fighting mihawk uh for the title of the world's strongest swordsman some people thought it would be towards the end of the story specifically after the final war um the battle for the one piece because this item or whatever joy boy and roger left behind it's going to affect the world so i think that once um an individual uh, achieves it um that'll then spark the final war and that'll be the end of the series and so personally maybe zoro might not necessarily have a chance to fight mihawk um is that the case if it's post um the final war um not saying that it will 100 happen but that's just my thoughts and i also love seeing the world government um i can't exactly tell you who it was um because it was just a panel of the base but more likely than not it was probably a kind who's talking about it hopefully we get to see him in the fold um i think that would be really cool i'm kind of tired he's so strong and i'm tired of seeing him sit behind the desk um because he just has so much potential want to see him potentially go against Saba, against luffy just i'm really excited for this final war and i cannot wait to see the battle for the one piece but as i mentioned there was a panel of an individual no clue who it is uh let me know who you guys believe that this person is in the comment section below this was a really good chapter um i saw on twitter people talk about his fire like you don't want to miss this i was trying to my best to stay off of twitter so i wouldn't get spoiled but i thought it was really cool um there is a break next week which for me i'm kind of happy because i'm gonna be going to dream con so that means i won't have to um wait to read the new one piece chapter and then whenever i get back that's when we'll get chapter 1122 that's it for this chapter it's a battle for supremacy let me know how you guys feel about it in the comment section below don't forget to like comment and subscribe hit the notification bell so you guys never sell a new video from me instagram twitter Twitter and TikTok is on the screen and in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to unleash your potential.